Hello and Assalamualaikum. Welcome to In This Moment Podcast. I am Zumar Ali, your host for this episode. In this episode, may tau guest Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, the author of the A Juz A Day Summary of the Quran, published by Thirty Publishing. He will share with us hopeful stories to inspire and motivate our troubled hearts. We hope this can be an opportunity for you to be in the moment, disconnect from the chaotic and confused world. In this moment, yeah, Alhamdulillah, um, Sheikh Yahya, thank you for um, making your time, spending your time tonight uh, to, to spend with us, um, all listeners. Uh, I think it's probably um, a wide range of of audience tonight we have from Malaysia, I think it's probably from Australia and all over the world. Um, we, we, we are really, really excited to have you. Um, what Before we start, I just want to hear and um, just to check the temperature in the room with, with you. What, what are you up these days? Because right now it's 11 p.m. in Australia. So, um, and, and you still say yes to this to this Twitter space. So what are you up to these days, uh, Sheikh Zahia? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. It's always um, a pleasure to connect with people and, you know, using technology for that which has a good purpose is something that uh, I think all of us are trying to transition to. So when you said, look, we're going to do this uh, kind of podcasty thing, I was like, yes, I'm down. Let's do it. I'm uh, excited. And to couple with that, we're talking about the Qur'an, talking about the deen of our Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu that he was sent to deliver to us. And to be one who is able to deliver it onto others puts us in that chain with our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how could anyone refuse such a wonderful offer? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, The best of you are those who are given the opportunity to acquire knowledge of the Qur'an and then transmit it, translate it, pass it on to others. Allahumma ja'alna minhum, may Allah make you and I and all of us from them. Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ameen. Thank you, Shusha, here for that, for that opening. Um, for tonight's topic on stories of hope for troubled heart, uh, I'd like to share with you that if you have any questions on any kind of concern that you're having right now, uh, whether it's about Quran, whether it's about uh, the Sunnah, the Hadith, or even about how the best, what is the best way to prepare yourself to 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 approach the Ramadan? Please, you can ask any question um, at the end of this session later, inshallah. Um, you may request to speak. Uh, you can press the button at the bottom left below, um, and uh, I'll let you to speak with Shahya Ibrahim. Um, you can ask directly anything to him, and and I think he's happily to to answer the question. Um, before we move on to the topic, um, I like to briefly introduce Imam Plus to Sheikh Shahya and everyone who is joining us right now. Um, Imam Plus, um, for your information, uh, Sheikh Zahya, uh, Imam Plus is a, a digital imprint of a content and publishing house known as Iman Publication in Malaysia. Uh, Iman Publication publishes books, uh, spiritual books. We have um, we have uh, loads of range of books. We have motivational books. We have self help books. And um, for example, we have the Art of Latin God by Ustad Mizi from Singapore and Light for the Low Soul by Mizina. And both of them you can have from uh, on our website imanshop.com. And uh, our sister company, Iman Shop Bookstore, is responsible for selling many great books, such as um, Usta, uh, Sheikh Yahya's book. We have Sheikh Yahya's book, uh, Just a Day, Summary of the Quran, and also Ramadan Jams, 30 Ways to Maximize Ramadan, uh, written by our guest, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. So you can get those books uh, on our website, imanshop.com imanshop.com and at the end of this session I'll share with you a code which you can use to get 10% off from those books. So this book is really really good to prepare yourself to face Ramadan in less than two more months so I really really encourage you to get that and uh, Iman Plus as a digital imprint uh, we make digital content such as this session that you're tuning into right now and we produce online classes uh, complementary to the books that we 
will be published in Iman. So you can check our website, imanplus.com, to browse all of our classes that we offer. Uh, and again, you can ask any question during the, during this during the space. Uh, if you have any concern, you can ask directly to Sheikh Yahya. I like to remind you, you have um, a very opportunity to to ask question to Sheikh Yahya, inshallah. And tonight, Sheikh Yahya, we're going to talk about the story of hope or troubled heart. Um, the stories of hope. I I I when when I created this title, I in my mind, what is the best way to describe Quran? And the only thing that I can actually come up with is hope. That's why the title is Stories of Hope. It's about Quran. We understand Quran, uh, Sheikh Yahya, uh, that Quran is the ultimate guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but I'm not sure about everyone in, in this room right now. But for me, myself, I feel sometimes very distant from it. When I read Quran, I couldn't understand the, the meaning, even though I read the translation. I read Quran, I read the translation, and, and I try to understand the, the meaning of the ayah, but why is it hard for me to contemplate and learn from it? So tonight, we're we trying to have uh, a bit of answers on, on that context. On my first question, Sheikh Yahya, you are known with, with your um, talk on the text of the Quran, the translation, the meaning, the, the, the meaning behind all the ayah in the Quran. But I really, really intrigued and, and actually really excited to know how you start your relationship with the Quran. Were you always um, interested in the studying the text, even when you were in school or in college? Or were you sort of placed in that field? So what is so special about learning the Quran to you if you reflect that? from the first you started your study in the Quran? Uh, the Quran has always been a part of my life, even as a young person, hearing it uh, in my father's recitation. The youngest memories I have is of my father carrying me on his shoulder to pray Salat al-Taraweeh at uh, Toronto's Jami Mos uh, Mosque uh, in, in the Dundas area. And I remember my mom and my dad, it was, uh, you know, they would carry us. And I was maybe three years old and my brother maybe one and a half years old. And I remember I would be put on the ground. Back then, Salat al-Taraweeh would begin at 10 o'clock at night. It was in the summertime, very late in the evening. And my dad would have me on the ground in front of him. So I'd be looking up and I could see my dad's beard. And every so often I would wait for him to get closer because he'd do ruku' and sujood. So the sound of the Qur'an was something that I heard in my home. Uh, so I have recordings of myself when I was five years old. My mom and my dad, they used to tape us uh, and our memorization of the Qur'an. They used to say this will be a great memory for them. And even now I have these recordings. I've digitized them, put them on CD players. Me reading, you know, uh, Surah Al-Alaq or whatever it may be. And the Qur'an was a part of our life in that sense, but we were nominal Muslims. There wasn't an ambition to memorize the Qur'an. So I guess one of the first lessons that uh, I've used in my home, in my family, and something that I hope could be a benefit to you, is to have the sound of the Qur'an in your home, to play it off a YouTube uh, playlist, to keep it uh, as your wake-up anthem for the morning, as your kids are brushing their teeth, getting to school, as you're driving to school, it's, uh, you know, something that's in your car, that it's just in the, it, it's the background of your life. So that's something that I got to experience. And, but my really turning point, the pivot, the lynch moment was maybe when I was about 15, maybe, maybe even 16. It was Salat al-Taraweeh. And my father, you know, and my mom, they took us to the masjid. And my first imam, uh, or the, my first teacher of the Qur'an, who was not yet my teacher, uh, a Sheikh Hamid Jabir, rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy on him and send light upon his grave and join us with him in Jannah with our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he, it was maybe about 20th night. I, I know it was Surah Al-Ankabut, because I can remember. And uh, he said, you know, Hanif Nuri is going to lead the salah today. He's my student learning, memorizing the Qur'an. And I thought, who's this little guy? And he was a, a young man, just about my age, 14, 15 years old at the time. And he stood forward and he had this amazing uh, opportunity to lead a thousand plus people at uh, Tariq Masjid. And I thought to myself, I can do that. I'm going to do that. That's something that I can accomplish that. 
He doesn't know Arabi. He was a Pakistani Canadian. He's a lawyer now, mashallah, in, in Ontario. And, you know, he completed the Quran with Sheikh Jabir. And the next Ramadan, my brother and I were both Imams for Tarawih. So that was the spark. So it was a moment of jealousy, of good jealousy. And the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith of Imam Muslim that there are two things we can have this ghibta, this, um, this good jealousy of. A person whom Allah has given the knowledge of the Quran, فَيَتْلُوهُ أَنَا اللَّيْ So they recite it in the depth of the night, practice it by day. And a person whom Allah has given wealth, وَلَا يَدْعُوا سَبِيلًا إِلَّا أَنْفَقَ فِيهِ And doesn't leave a path except they give charity in it. They have wealth, so they're giving and giving. So you look and say, I, I wish Allah made me wealthier that I can give the way this individual gives or that Allah gave me the Quran, that I can lead myself at night with it that I can teach it to others. So that that was really the start of learning uh, the sound of the Qur'an, the, the tajweed of the Qur'an, the desire to memorize the Qur'an. Uh, it took me about 18, 19 months to finish, alhamdulillah, the memorization. Uh, my brother, uh, just either before me or just after me as well. And then became the, lear- the journey of wanting to understand its meaning. But that I guess that's a... A bigger story but that's really the the turning point of me wanting to to learn the quran to 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 read it and and memorize it alhamdulillah alhamdulillah wow i'm i'm amazed i, I was trying to to reflect that on my past you were um sparked with, with the quran when you were um when you were five years old and i was trying to reflect what did i do when i was Five years old. No, I was playing. So, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah. Thanks, thank you. That, that was very. There's a very profound story. Um, and and inspiring as well. Thank you, Sheikh Yahya, for sharing with us. But but so you have been always been related to the Quran, and it sounds like um you familiar with with this presence. Um, but just now when you when you mentioned about the, the stories when when you were introduced to the Quran. How did you actually realize that Quran is able to somehow quote unquote speak to you meaningfully? Did you have any verse um, that really sparked that that moment uh, early on that speaks to you meaningfully that you can still remember that moment? Um. So, what really I think um, what really turned my life in wanting to know the meaning of the Quran is that as you begin to memorize it, you begin to see that there are some ayat, verses that are similar to others. And, you know, you can easily get mixed up and and enter in a totally different surah. But if you know the meaning of what you're reciting, it's much easier for you to be able to stay in the right place, in the right context, and also to follow the right grammar rules that you know with where the fatha, damma, and kasra are, if you know the rules of the Arabic language. And really, tajweed, the essence of it is, you know, um, making sure that you are the qira'a, that it is, there isn't any lahan jali, there isn't any uh, excessive mistakes that, that changes the meaning. So once you begin memorizing a, a section of the Qur'an or you begin to give the Qur'an your attention, you want to have something of tadabbur. You want to have something where... Allah asks a rhetorical question. Don't they think to reflect and ponder over and, uh, you know, go deeper into the meaning of what they are reciting? And a lot of our uh, non-Arabic speaking uh, brothers and sisters, they assume that because somebody is Arabi, somebody, you know, they come from an Arabic country or background, that the Qur'an is intuitive and they will know exactly what it means. It's like picking up a newspaper. And of course, that's not true. The Qur'an is its own language. So the Qur'an, Qur'an Arabiyan غير ذي عوج It doesn't allow or have any uh, uh, flexibility. It's very static. So you can't just assume you understand its meaning. You actually have to study its meaning. A simple surah, all of us, we know. وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحَا فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَا فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ صُبْحَا فَأَثَرْنَ بِهِ نَقْعَا If you walk up to any Arabic person, even some of the Arabic people listening to us now, 
and you say, what do these verses mean? Uh, you know, they will tell you, well, look, I don't know. Because if you translate it literally, it doesn't seem to make sense. So yeah. Al-Adiyat, you need to decipher that these are war horses, that they are breathing heavy because they are on a siege of battle. And, you know, Allah's giving the imagery that your life will be destroyed when the day of judgment comes. And the only thing that would remain is your faithfulness and good deeds. So how do you get that out of just reading the language? It doesn't make sense. And therefore, it, it, it was a turning point to kind of say, hey, I, I need to know what this means, not just how to recite it or how to memorize it. And that, of course, still remains as being one of the most important aspects of my teaching of the Qur'an to my students in, in, in my classes or online, uh, on my online Islamic school, uh, that the, the, the focus is, this is Allah didn't give us the Quran for us to be parrots and just you know make the sound and copy somebody else's voice, but Allah gave us the Quran ayati that they may comprehend its meaning and verses. Um, so even if it's just one verse, which is one word, Ar Rahman, the great name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that 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 ayah, which is one word. Uh, you know, I spend nearly uh, a whole session uh, in my tafsir of Surah Al-Rahman just speaking about why the word Ar-Rahman is the only name of Allah that is used on its own. Mm-hmm. All of the other names of Allah are in combination. al hayyul Al-Qayyum, uh, you know, uh, Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, Al-Aziz Al-Hamid, whatever it may be. But this is the only one. It's Ar-Rahman that doesn't need anything with it. So just, just beginning to think about the Qur'an in, in, a, in a deeper sense it, in, endears you to Allah, makes you more love to Allah, and puts in your heart more love for Allah for having blessed us to have hearts that are open to the Qur'an. Thank you. Thank you, Shaykh Yahya. That, that was very interesting. When you mentioned about the, the, the struggle in understanding the Quran for the non-Arabic, myself is a non-Arabic as well. That's why it's very struggling for me um, to really understand the Quran. And I think that is something that we definitely need to, to talk more about for a bit. But before that, I, want, I would like to remind everyone that um, you guys can actually ask questions directly to Shaykh Yahya Ibrahim. So please, um, if you're not familiar with Twitter space, um, you can press the button at the bottom left. There's a microphone button there and you can press a request and I'll allow you to ask question when we finish talking about this topic, inshallah. You can ask literally anything about the Quran, about the Hadith, about how you would like to prepare yourself to, to approach the Ramadan. Please ask any question and I'm sure Shia Yahya would like to answer them happily. So, Shaykh Yahya, just, just now you mentioned about the, the struggle in understanding the Quran for non-Arabic speakers. Uh, in Malaysia, Shaykh Yahya Ibrahim, for your information, we have so many Quranic classes uh, taught by great teachers. But even with that good accessibility of Quranic classes, the essence of the Quran, understanding is one thing, but the, 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 the how do we actually um, uh, practice the essence of the Quran is another thing. And that thing seems missing from the character of the Muslim in Malaysia. We learn and learn from the classes, but it's quite hard to actually integrate the message to build our Muslim character. I would like to ask you, how is it in, in Australia? And where do you think that the, the gap actually lies in understanding the Quran and building and practicing the Qur'an to build our character? Uh, so Tawheed builds character. The Qur'an is meant to build character. The essence of the Qur'an is that it becomes a part of our living behavior. And that's why Aisha, Umm al-Mu'mineen, radiallahu anha, the great wife of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the mother of the believers, uh, when she was asked by people after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sifi lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, describe to us the messenger of Allah. Qalat, kan al-Qur'anu yamshi bayna nas He was a Qur'an that walked amongst mankind. 
which kind of shows you that the Quran was a life, um, uh, is, is given that life through our enactment of it. So the Quran is, its message is alive if we keep it alive in our behavior. And the Quran is lost when we as believers lose the practice of the Quran. And very early on, the Prophet ﷺ would make dua to Allah in Surah Al-Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا That the Messenger raised his complaint to Allah and he says, Oh my Lord, inna qawmi, my people, اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا They've taken this Qur'an but have abandoned it. And the ulama of tafsir, they say that both the Muslim and the non-Muslim have abandoned the Qur'an in a particular sense. So the unbelievers at the time of the Prophet, they would hear it, they loved to listen to it, they enjoyed its message, but they would abandon practicing the tawheed that it called to because it was an inconvenient truth. It was inconvenient for them, for their economic prosperity, for the kingdom they wanted to maintain and so they they did or are out of jealousy of the prophet's position وسلم, so they didn't uh, accept it however the believers like you and i we accept the quran in faithful belief in our heart but the other hand at times we abandon the quran by abandoning its practice sheikh al islam ibn al qayyimi actually has a book where he itemizes 14 one four 14 different ways that the Muslim Ummah abandons the Qur'an. The first way, he simply says, is that we don't use it as a cure. So the first time you have a headache, instead of reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, blowing in your hand and wiping it over your place of pain on your head and ask Allah to give you shifa with the barakah of the Qur'an, your natural instinct is to grab a Panadol or Tylenol and, and uh, you know, oh, I must be dehydrated and it's got to be just or only a physical remedy. So that's one of the ways the Ummah has abandoned the Quran. We don't um, use it in the in the best of ways, for the best of reasons, in, in the way that was meant to be used by us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, Ya Rabb. Thank you. Thank you, mashallah. That's that's very um yeah, that's the thing. Um it's it's hard for us actually to practice the, the Quran when, when we don't understand. And you, you brought a very good point. One of the smallest Detailed thing such as we don't see Quran in our daily life, such as looking for the cure with with Quran with with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's one of the reason why we are becoming so distant uh, from from Quran. Um, so everyone, um, again, I like to remind you guys: if you have any question, you can ask uh, directly to Sheikh Yahya by pressing the button uh, by the bottom left. Um, and I'll allow you to ask questions directly to him uh, later on, inshallah. And also, um, this is something that we offer uh, on imamplus.com. So um, it's something related to how to prepare yourself um, and getting closer to, to the Quran and also preparing yourself with um, with, with the tips to, to, to approach uh, Ramadan with a better preparation. We have um, a, a class, an online class, a pre-recorded class on our website, uh, imamplus.com. And, and you can purchase the online class um, with a discounted price when you use YES, yes, a voucher code. Um, you can use that voucher code when checking out and you'll get a eight ringgit off uh, from that online class. So the, that online class is actually about how to uh, maximize your Ramadan and, and how you can um, just just find the center of your life in this all distractions. We have so many distractions nowadays. So presence of the heart will give you the tips on how to find the center of your life and make yourself um, maximize um, yourself to, to, to have a better Ramadan this day, inshallah. So you can get that uh, on our website imamplus.com with discounted price when you use yes yes as a voucher code to purchase that online class inshallah um yes uh uh yahya ibrahim um when when you mentioned about we 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 don't see the quran as our cure anymore but what can we do what, what what can really um we do to improve our relationship with the quran um, whether in the context of a person or in the context of a community, 
why how how can we do to improve our relationship with the quran and probably what are the challenges that will come with it as well i think one of the things um that becomes important for us to think about is that with the quran especially with um our belief that it is um not just a spiritual medicine but it has a real life ability to help us in some of the the spiritual problems we have but also some of the tangible problems we kind of assume that the quran is something that only helps with things like um you know if i'm feeling down or something like this but it also has an opportunity to help us with our physical problems as well So just realigning our understanding of the Quran understanding that the Quran can be something that goes beyond uh what we assume it to be that it can have greater impact up, uh, uh, upon us in in those kind of things. So I wanted to give I guess three ways that you and I can kind of come closer to the Quran. The first of them is to make an intent study of how to pronounce it and how to read it the way it was delivered to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and many of us we kind of underestimate that reading the quran in that way reciting the quran in that way is something that's you know i i know enough tajweed that that's enough i don't need to know all of the tajweed do i really have to read it with all the tajweed and the answer is the more you read it like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more you appreciate the beauty of the 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 quran and its pronunciation and that the 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 way of stressing the letters is actually something that could be of great benefit to us in other ways as well the second thing is to find a teacher for it so nothing is going to motivate you in reciting the quran and in practicing the quran better than having a mentor for it and alhamdulillah you especially malaysia you've been blessed with a great many ulama you know you have jakim you have so many wonderful uh, opportunities to connect with 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 people of the quran and it's an art i i i remember the international quran competitions in ramadan and all of those kind of wonderful activities that are that are always happening in malaysia one of uh, you know it's my second home mashallah may allah return us to it soon allahumma amin mm-hmm. so all of those are incredible kind of opportunities connect with a teacher connect with a mentor and third is connect with other students of the quran that when you connect with other students of the quran it allows you then to have somebody who pushes you along who kind of mentors you in that process so when you compete with each other in that sense it's competing uh in at tanafus in in khair uh in in doing that which is good so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support us in this allahumma amin uh finally if there's uh, the the last thing that i can say uh, maybe about this just because of the time and i'm sure there's other topics that you want to delve in into as well and to hear from uh some of our other um listeners today is to know that the quran is accessible to a heart that seeks its purity that seeks to become better by it so the quran will give you as much as you seek to take from it and if your heart is distracted lahiyatan qulubuhum then the quran will be irrelevant to you if the if your heart wants something it wants the quran and you're seeking the quran then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with the quran and you'll be able to have an opening in it and and be and be blessed by it inshallah i mean i mean thank you thank you sheikh ibrahim for that doa that i really really touched by that point when you mentioned about the sincerity that's the heart that since is sick the the quran um will find its way to the quran so i hope everyone will get um that sincerity the purity of the heart to seek the lessons and the essence of the quran and may allah give us that 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 essence inshallah i mean when you mentioned about the the lessons in the quran and um i really want to talk about one small thing in 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 I, I, it's not small actually most of the stories in the quran will talk about trials and tribulations and 
um, this 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 theme is all over the Quran. There were many stories in the Quran talking about informing us about the trials and tribulations of the prophets of the previous generations, and um, I'm I'm sure that all, people always say seek, um, uh, people always say these trials and tribulations will bring purity because it's it's going to um, to 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 Allah will forgive your sins due to these trials and these tests and these tribulations. However, if you could give us a, a sense of the significance of the the the, the tests and the tribulations in our life, why is it important that Allah gives us the tests? in our life and how how is this test really really meaningful to our life as well Shaykh Yahya um, Subhanallah uh, if there was anyone who carried tests in life it was our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the prophets who came before him Asirat Al-Mustaqim requires for us to have istiqama upon a path that is straight but it doesn't mean that it's a path that is clear of hardships. So not because the path before us is, is straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means it's level. That means it doesn't have elevations and things that you have to climb over and go around and dig under and break through. And our Nabi sallallahu is the one who gave us this example of his own life. That's why Allah gave us all of these examples in the Quran and all of their stories that you and I can kind of benefit from what it is that we see in that. And in understanding that those who are better than us received greater hardships than us and how they remain patient and vibrant and worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that this is something that should be inspirational to us in that sense. So one of the ways that we use the Quran is to look at the qasas of the Quran, the narratives and the stories that are in it, as being stories that are full of morality, but also stories that are full of inspiration for you and I to get the tools and the life skills that we need to go through hardship. Uh, those who have lost a child, you have the example of Yusuf alayhi salam and his father Yaqub. If you have the example of being a single mother, you are like Maryam alayhi salam. If you have an example of being an adopted son under a tyrant, you have the example of Musa. If you have the example of, you know, brothers who cooperate in evil against one of their own, you have the example of Yusuf and his patience. If you have the forgiveness of one brother against others, you have the example of Yusuf alayhi salam forgiving them after the major mistakes that they have made in their life. All of these are things for you and I to kind of see that this is the best way for us to begin to face the hardships that are before us. So as the Qur'an is something we recite in terms of its sound and its rhythm and for the spiritual reward, it also has some very, very practical, important lessons for all of us, uh, inshallah, to adhere to. May Allah give us success. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. Ameen, ya Rabbal Alameen. However, Shaykh Yahya, one thing that I really, really um, try to find answer for is um, when, when, when Allah tells us about the trials and tribulations, he also tells about the, the the story after that, but rarely we can get um the the connection to um how do this prophet become a better person um after the the trial and the test. Um, what I'm trying to say is is actually the 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 story after the test and trials is always the the motivation that we are looking in in our life because that's the role model that we are looking at. Um, how does actually Quran give hopes and motivation or the comfort to those people who are undergoing the trials when, when, you, when they read the, the stories of the Prophet? Uh, one of the, you know, maybe a good example would be in, in kind of looking at um, one of the stories of the Prophets of Allah. Uh, in looking at Ibrahim alayhi salam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him by the loss of his father and mother, that they remain in disbelief, they don't come to Tawheed, they don't come to Islam, and something that should be logical and true, that they never really uh, come to believe in Allah as they should believe. And yet Ibrahim alayhi salam continues to make dua for them. 
Yet Ibrahim alayhi salam continues to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them. You know, this is a dua you and I continue to make. And therefore, for somebody whose parents, alhamdulillah, are Muslim, for somebody whose parents, alhamdulillah, are treating them well, for somebody whose parents are doing the right thing, when sometimes you're upset with them, I'm upset with my parents, it should remind me, hold on a second, look at Ibrahim, when things were worse than you and I could ever imagine, he still had this behavior to them. So it gives us a code of character and a code of honor. When we ask, how does the Qur'an give us hope? It speaks to us about Jannah and the reward of justice being given to us when we feel that justice isn't served. The Qur'an is the one that gives us the, the message that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was persecuted and those who loved him at times, uh, you know, were martyred before seeing the strength of Islam and the goodness of Islam, that their reward did not end with their life. Their reward did not end with them uh, you know, being in a place of not having accomplished the mission. Uh, you know, Hamza radiallahu anhu passes away in the battle of Uhud. He never saw the conquest of Mecca. He never saw the greatness of Islam entering Bayt al-Maqdis and Jerusalem. Yet, his life was that of success. And therefore, it kind of gives us that perspective that our life, there is greater to it than what we appreciate. The mercy of Allah is always with us. Allah will always help his servants. Allah will always give strength to the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports each and every one of us in the ways that are most meaningful to us, even when we don't know. So we may be making dua to Allah to give us uh, an increase in rizq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to lose our job so that we open our own business. And at the moment we lost our job, we were more fearful, but we put our trust in Allah. Perhaps we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our home life with our spouse better. And sadly, our home life ends in divorce. Subhanallah, in that divorce becomes the rahmah we needed to find the right spouse, inshallah, in the future who gives us the love that we deserve and the happiness that we should have. So we may look at things in one way, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the lesson in the Quran time and again that His knowledge is what is absolute. His uh, teaching uh, of the Prophet that patience in his uh, teaching of their life for us becomes the code of conduct that we have in the way that we seek hope Alhamdulillah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease and comfort and success Allahumma ameen Ameen, ameen Thank you Shaykh Yahya Ibrahim for that sharing um, The very first thing that, that did come to my mind that if you want to see the wisdom behind the task the trials and the tribulations is always come back to the first thing that Shaykh Yahya said about how do, how do we understand the Quran is through the sincerity and the purity of the heart and that's the only way I think to, to see the wisdom behind the task that Allah gives us in our life inshallah so we pray and make dua to Allah so that we can we have the purity and the sincerity to see the wisdom behind the things that happen in our life if you if you guys all the listeners love to to uh, live this content and really really um, excited about what she uh, has been sharing with us you might also like the the book the books written by she ibrahim and we have um those books uh with with uh, on our website right now so you can get uh, there are four books all together by she ibrahim that we have um, so far, and first, Ajay Yahya has written uh, a juice a day, the summary of the Quran. Um, and then we have the uh, 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 Yahya also uh, wrote the tearful moments of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the the love stories from the Quran, and the, the fourth book, uh, the Ramadan gems, thirty ways to maximize Ramadan. You can get these four books uh, on our website www.imanshop.com www.imanshah.com and you can get 10% off 10% off of this um, book uh, by using this code new year n-e-w-y-e-a-r new year when you check out you'll get 10% off of this uh, book from its original price you can get 10% off so please go to imanshah.com and get Shay Yahya Ibrahim's books um, with 10% off from the original price inshallah 
So thank you, uh, Sheikh Yahya. I think um, right now we're going to listen the the, the, the questions from the audience, inshallah. So I have one um, one um, audience here. Uh, she's really excited to ask you questions. So, uh, Rahma, are you there? Hi, Assalamualaikum, Zumar and Shah Yahya. Wa alaikum as Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, okay, so I have actually two questions. I hope that's not too much. Um, the first one is that I think um, on a very personal level, I kind of struggle to maintain a much more, how to say, like maybe istiqamah or maybe like a, a, a much more uh, steady relationship with the Quran. So I think like on, on some, on, on, on some parts of the year where, uh, you know, things are going really well, then, of course, you still read the Quran and all that. Um, but there are some parts of the year where things get, like, really, really bad. Then only you realize that it kind of like, you know, that you have to find, um, like, a solution within it. That you have to find uh, peace within Quran. So, I guess, like, in a way, there's this conflict within me that, um, is that fair? <laughs> is that fair that I... I treat it that way, right? And and, and it kind of like makes me feel a little bit um, uh, bad um, about the situation because I feel like I can only relate to it um, deeply when um, when I'm in trouble, when things are really tough. So um, it it's hard, um, but to not feel like you're a good, bad Muslim. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah, um, so that's <laughs> the, 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 the very thought of that is a sign of Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala complete our Iman and make us better than, than we assume ourselves to be and, and allow us to be better into our future. Allahumma ameen. But yeah, uh, you know, feeling those kind of feelings in our heart is something that gives us a greater happiness into the future. Uh, that you know that there is this struggle. And, and unless you have the mujahada, unless there is the struggle, then it's not worth receiving what it is that you're seeking at the end of it. Unless you push hard for something, un uh, unless there is pain, there's no gain. Unless you uh, experience a withdrawal from the Quran, sometimes it's not enough to run after it. And the Prophet ﷺ says, أَشَدُّ شَيْءً تَفَلُّتَ of the things that leaves you quickly is the Qur'an. And, and that's actually intentional by Allah because it makes you say, hold on, hold on. I'm going to forget this surah. I forgot this part. Let me go back. I want to, you know, revise it. I want to re-recite -re it. I want to I reconnect with it. So you become craving of that ayah of the Qur'an, of that hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, of that attitude of Islam to hold back onto it so that you never lose it. That's all important. And it, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you feel remorse because it is only those who make tawbah or return to Allah that are believers. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ilallah. Most people, they make the mistake thinking tawbah is only from sins. Tawbah is not only from sins. Tawbah is from the good things that we do that we could do more of or do better in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and keep you strong and bless you with Iman. Allahumma ameen. 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 Thank you, Rahma. Um, I believe you have another question, perhaps, Rahma. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess my, my second question is that I think, I think this speaks to um, a lot of people, especially my peers as well, um, which is, um, how do you, and, and, and I was really interested in the way that you said that, um, uh, look at our prophet. Sometimes they have like it harder than than us, and so, so it makes it um, possible for us to kind of like, you know, um, look at all these other uh, pains that our prophets have um, uh, that had to go that that have gone through, um, and and maybe we'll be able to like help us reflect on the goodness on the on the good things, um, in in our pain too. But I guess uh, my question, um. You know, in that situation, is that how do you like balance between validating your um, your sadness, validating your pain, validate, validating your troubled heart? Um, because whatever that you feel is also real, right? Um, I think that has to be validated. But um, and and you will never be able to compare yourself to the prophet. So how do you um, how do you kind of like stay? I guess, like, um, um, stay. Uh, how you able to like reflect and seek peace in this in these tales, 
um, and understanding that they are the people who are like having it harder than than us, while also validating our pains and 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 struggles. Um, that is it. Thank you so much. Allah barak fiki. Uh, that's a really uh, deep uh, question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Uh, I think a, a, a part of our humanity is that we try to control things that are uncontrollable. So we're always trying to assess how can I dominate something or how can I make sense of something or I need an answer for something. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is that he gives us some of these lessons of the prophets where they just have to submit and they just have to accept. Uh, so if we return to Ibrahim, Ibrahim just has to accept the fact that his father, Azar, does not come into Islam. And there's this powerful hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where Azar will meet his son Ibrahim on the day of judgment. فيقول, ya bunay. He will say to him, oh my dearest son. Now he says, ya bunay. before it was... Uh, you know, Ya Ibrahim. Now he's saying, my dearest son, you know, your Lord will answer you on my behalf now. Ask him to forgive me. And Ibrahim alayhi salam says to him, Alam aqul laka, didn't I already tell you that you should have adjusted your life in the dunya? You should have made that decision yourself. He says, please, my son, make dua. So Ibrahim makes dua to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ahad ilayk, didn't I already make a covenant that I will not forgive the one who comes to where you are now and ask for it if they have not moved towards it? And Allah separates between the father of Ibrahim and his, and his son, and Allah casts the father of Ibrahim into his punishment. And subhanAllah, that hadith, it's, it's, you know, it's an incredible hadith. It's Allah saying, you don't have the power to decide what you want to decide. And those are things that are beyond you. And in life, there are circumstances for myself and you, my dear sister, for all of our listeners that are beyond us. And what the Quran does is to try to, to allow us to not seek to validate the things that are not within our power to validate, to not seek to make sense of the things that are not in our power to understand. Yes, alunak an ruh. They ask you about the soul. Qul ruh min amri rabbi. Respond that the soul is the concern of my Lord. You don't have enough knowledge and enough power to understand it, even if it was explained. Allah begins surahs alif la meem. Kaf ha ya ayn sad. Alif la ra. All of these are just letters. Nobody on the face of the earth today can tell you what the meaning of those letters are. And it's as if Allah is saying to you and I that the Qur'an that is before you, there will always be mystery in it because your life is a mystery. The good things and the bad, the moments of joy and uh, the lack of them. Yeah, so at the end of it, what we discover is that in life, what we think is good may not be good. What we think is terrible may actually best be best for us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are blessed and blessed with its reading, blessed with its practice, blessed with the opportunity to understand a word of it that we can put into our own life and help others put into theirs. Allahumma ameen. 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 Thank you, Shia Yahya Ibrahim. And um, again, I would, I would like to apologize to everyone for the technical problem just now and to Shia Yahya as well. So thank you for coming back, Shia Yahya. Um, I have one last I have one one last question because we're in the month of the Rajab right now and time has traveled so fast. Um, I can still remember my Ramadan last year. It wasn't that the best Ramadan. So my, my question probably about um, the preparation to, to approach Ramadan. Um, so Shay Yahya, could you please share with us um, the, some tips um, or advice on how to um, strengthen our relationship with the Quran and how do we um, able to push this relationship so that we can get the best of, of, out of this uh, holy month of uh, Rajab, Sha'ban and Ramadan because they, they, they always say Rajab and Sha'ban is the, the training battlefield for uh, Ramadan where Ramadan is the real war so 
How can we strengthen? Allahumma barik lana fi Ramadan, fi Rajab wa Shaaban, wa balighna Ramadan. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa taala put baraka in the month of Rajab and Shaaban. The ulama when they make that du'a, the baraka of Rajab and Shaaban means, Oh Allah, give us reading of the Quran in it, because uh, I want you to understand that anything the Quran comes to, it blesses it and improves it. Ramadan is only a blessed month because it's the month the Quran was revealed. That's what makes Ramadan special from the other 11 months or 12 months of the year. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a good man, but what makes him an incredible man, what makes him the last prophet is that he was chosen for the Quran. Had any other man been chosen for the Quran, it could be other than him, but it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who becomes the best Sayyidul Khalq because of the Quran. The Qur'an, anything it is associated with, it ennobles it. So the month of Ramadan and our opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the, the Qur'an to begin our training from it, for it, and, and uh, in, in approaching it is really uh, the intent in the month of Rajab. Increase your fasting, increase your reading of the Qur'an by day and by night, and begin to seek to plan out uh, a blessed Ramadan May Allah bless all of us with it. Allahumma ameen. It was an honor and privilege to have this opportunity to share with you, even if it's just these few words. Forgive me for any uh, technical difficulties and faults. And I pray that you have a good night or a good morning, respective of where you are in the world. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. Thank you. Thank you, Shia Yahya Ibrahim, for that sharing. And I really appreciate that. And uh, I hope everyone gets the benefit from this session, inshallah. And if you would like to listen again to this session, uh, listen again to the advices and the tips from Shia Yahya Ibrahim, inshallah, this, this, this space will be released as a podcast episode in a series called In This Moment in March. So please uh, follow our social media at imamplus.com on Instagram and Twitter for more info on this podcast or any other uh, products that we offer and before we end I also would like to again uh, promote the the online class that we have the presence of the heart this pre-recorded class uh, you'll get insights on how to optimize uh, the Ramadan and uh, ultimately your life uh, from seven amazing speakers. We have uh, Shay uh, Mikhail Smith, we have uh, Iman Salam and Ustazah Zainab Talha. Um, this online class will give you the tips on how to maximize your, your Ramadan and ultimately your life. Um, and original price is 38 ringgit. You can get 8 ringgit off uh, if you use this code YES when checking out at imamplus.com. And please also, we have code for Yahya Ibrahim's books on imanshop.com. You can use New Year. Uh, the discount code is New Year. You'll get 10% off of uh, Shay Yahya Ibrahim's books on imanshop.com. Uh, they are the Juice of the Day, Summary of the Quran, Tearful Moments of Rasulullah, Love Stories from the Quran, Ramadan Gems, City Ways to Maximize Ramadan. I think all these four books are really, really um, suitable for you if you want to prepare yourself. Um, to tra- strengthen your relationship with Quran in the month of Rajab and Shaban. And when, by the time Ramadan approaches, you already have that knowledge in you to understand Quran better in the Ramadan, inshallah. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Shia Ibrahim, again for spending your time with us. Um, inshallah, um, uh, till next time, uh, we will talk to you again, inshallah. Thank you for listening to this space till the end. And take care and stay safe, everyone. This episode of Stories of Hope for Troubled Heart is a collaboration between Imam Plus and Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim is an educator and a role model that has touched many hearts. He is a contributor at Yakin Institute and an instructor at Al Maghrib Institute. He is also the author of A Juz A Day Summary of the Quran, Tearful Moments of Rasulullah. Love Stories from the Quran and Ramadan Gems 30 Ways to Maximize Ramadan, published by 30 Publishing. You can follow him on Instagram at Yahya underscore Adol underscore Ibrahim. This episode is a part of In This Moment podcast series. The series is available on Iman Plus Spotify and Iman YouTube. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channels if you don't want to miss our latest episodes. For more information on the podcast or any other products from Iman Plus, please check out our social media account at imanplus.com on Instagram and Twitter and Iman Plus on Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter and please check out our website imanplus.com today. Till next time, take care and stay safe.